Well, I thought I was done opening up the uh, boiler, but I didn't forget to install the um, thermostat wire, which connects to here, this terminal. So I run it down over, loops up, creeps behind, up the wall right there, and it sneaks all the way over to my wife, who's over there hiding. So we ended up putting the uh, thermostat in the laundry room. And the reason I did that is I don't think it's going to make a difference whether it's in the hallway or not. Now I didn't want to have it in the hallway where you're going to see it a lot. So we ended up sticking it back uh, in the laundry room. That door we're going to put kind of a barn door style on it is the uh, idea there. So it's going to be open most of the time anyways. So the outdoor temperature sensor is hooked up, the thermostat's hooked up. Everything's plumbed and ready to go. So now we're going to fill the system and hope I don't have any leaks because getting a wrench to tighten some of this stuff now that everything is in place is going to be kind of hard. So what we'll do is I've got some hoses set up and a tote down here. So I'm going to put a sump pump in the bottom with my water and then this jug has my um, glycol in it. And the way I've calculated is I've got about 15 gallons of fluid in my five lines here. And um, there'll be a couple more gallons flowing through the boiler itself and through all this piping and everything. So a 30% um, mixture of glycol to water will get me down to about zero degrees uh, freezing. 50% um, mixture will get me below that. So we rarely get, of course, last winter was the exception, but we rarely get below uh, zero around here. And that's zero if the house is off and we're gone and the pipes are not heated. So 30% mixture should be perfectly fine. Um, one thing to consider is the glycol, when you mix in with your water, it brings your pressure up, the pressure value up. Uh, but the expansion tank I have uh, should be more than enough to cover that. If not, if the expansion tank is not enough, then my uh, pressure relief valves here will blow out. So this one is for the domestic hot water side, and then this one and this top one is for the boiler side. Now if you look inside here, you'll see where the uh, boiler um, expansion one goes, right up there in the top. And then as it comes down, I don't know if you can see it in the back there still. Um, it breaks off into a few more things, but it goes right down through the bottom, right actually down through this pipe. So I didn't need this one. Um, this one came with the kit and I had it, so I might as well put it on there. But this second one is not needed because the factory already includes this top one here for you. So I had a little bit overkill having an extra one there, but um, not going to hurt anything. And if it does leak or cause a problem, I can always just plug it up. It's not going to be a, a big issue. But all these pipes run down. Code has you running these down um, towards the ground because if they're shooting out or they're way up here and it starts spitting out hot water because there's too much pressure and it can uh, hurt someone around here trying to work on it. So all I'll eventually do is put a catch pan down here or just put a bucket underneath it. Um, usually these don't explode and just shoot stuff on the ground. A lot of times it'll start dribbling first. So I may just leave it like this and see what happens. But everything is plumbed and ready to go. So we're ready to start filling. So what we're going to do is, again, I'll put my water and glycol mixture in here. Um, I'll have a sump pump, which will hook up to this hose. It'll pump it up into the system, and then I'll have all these valves off. Open this one first. It'll go down through the house come back up out of here, down this hose, and I'll know all my air is out when I get a steady stream. And then I'll go up, turn this one off, turn that one on, do the same thing, go all the way through these first five until I've got all the air out, open them all up, let it run for even longer, um, get everything out that I possibly can. Um, so I have to have this valve open and that valve open, that one closed and that one closed. So the fluid's just cycling through the manifold itself. Then I will um, close these off, button them up. I'll go over to these fill valves. There's one there. There's one there for the boiler side and then do the same thing. Now this has an autofill feature, which is supposed to autofill it up to uh, 12 PSI 
Um, but I'm going to go ahead and actually cycle it through there to fill that up so it doesn't have to uh, do that if it doesn't need to. Then um, I should be able to open that valve in that valve and then maybe purge it through these lines again to get any air out of um, these lines that run up and through the expansion tank and all that. So I got a lot, quite a lot of filling to do. Okay, so I have five gallons of glycol and five gallons of water in here. I've got an extra bucket next to me with another five gallons. There's my 15 gallons all together. That gives me about a 33% um, glycol to water ratio. And then when I fill the boiler up, that'll bring me down to about my 30%, which is what I'm looking for. So the pump I'm using is actually a pool cover pump. Um, it's made to suck water down really low versus just a regular uh, sump pump. And I can't think of anything else I need to do. All these are tightened down. So I'm going to open the first one up. Two. Open this valve. Open this valve. So it should happen. Pump will flow water up, over down the pipe. I'm assuming it'll take a little bit of time to get all the way through. It'll come back up into this manifold, down and back into my jug. So any extra water will flow back down into here. Once it's done blowing bubbles and everything, then I'll know I can go on to the next one. I really don't know how much bubbles it's gonna blow, and I really hope it doesn't make a big mess. Here we go. Maybe. The pump doesn't seem to work. <laughs> um, well, that was short lived. Well, I guess my pump is broke. That was unexpected. All right, back in business. So the outlet that I had it on was a GFCI, and uh, it popped the GFCI. So I'm going to go ahead, try this again. i got to plug into a different outlet that's non-GFCI, and uh, see if we can get those bubbles out. The problem is that my outlet is now 10 feet away from me. So turning this on and off, I'm going to have to run. See the darker color, the water's going through, it's kind of a dark blue. Smells bad. I didn't think about this, but this is quite a lot to ask of this pump to push through. 300 foot of line and back up, so hopefully it can handle it. So it's just a little pool sump pump. It may heat up and pop the other breaker too, we'll see. But at least it's not pushing out so fast that it's really blowing bubbles like crazy. I was afraid it'd be splattering everywhere. Oh, here it comes. how much to tighten these, but there's a little drip coming down from there. Well, maybe my calculation was pretty close. We're on the last line and we're down to about not much in there. 
Well, well, that's filling up. I forgot about this on the pool pump. I guess the bottom, it shuts itself off. So that's actually nice too. So I got four lines full and maybe half on the last one. Um, I'm glad I put the spin down filter in there because there's definitely some debris in my water. Some of it probably came from the pump. So I didn't think about cleaning the pump first and some of it looks like it's from the bottom of the um, glycol or something, little black speckles or blue speckles. But anyways, I put this spin down filter in here so any gunk that happens to get in here should get caught in that filter. And then there's also two filters inside the boiler itself that will catch everything. cycling like it's uh, got air in the line and not able to get it out. There we go. There we go. Okay. Back in business. So now I'm going to open them all up. Oh, we got a leak there. Leaks. That was the number one complaint on this when I read the reviews was that people had problems getting them sealed up. Where did my rag go? Okay, well that's cycled several times and I don't see any water going through it. So if I keep the boiler ones closed and I open everything else, it should cycle through all these pipes and around. And we'll see what other leaks we have going on here. Open, well, I will open this one. Maybe. Spin down filter filled up quick. So on this system, if I wanted to, I could actually take these caps off and set up actuators, which would open and close the valves. So I could have five different zones throughout the house, and then uh, all controlled by their own thermostat. All right. So I'm cockling out all the air out of that one. Shut this off, close this up. I'll go over and fill up the um, boiler now because I'm not 100% sure if it got filled when I opened everything up. So 
got probably two gallons of water in here. Um, I originally thought it was going to take 15. I think it took more like 18. And of course, this is still mixed with glycol, so um, I say I'm pretty darn close to that 30% uh, mixture. And I got everything on. I got to close those. These are open. Those are open. Everything's open. My filter is dirty, but it's not clogged. It's not even close to being clogged. So then I'm going to run it for a while, and let it get everything out of the system before I decide to clean that filter. Plus, I got a filter, another one back there too. But I'll get all this unhooked, plug it in, see if it works. Okay, let's look at the instruction manual here on here and a couple things I want to set. I need to get into the installer mode to change these settings here. So to do that, when the control panel is off, I would press this button right there and hold down for five seconds. That'll take me into installer mode. Um, here I can set default high temperature, low temperature ranges for the domestic hot water and the um, house heating. I do, did hook up the outdoor temperature sensor. So I'm going to turn that to on, and then that will actually cancel with, it'll cancel all of this out. And then I've got to set my outdoor temperature desired, and then I can set it to um, uh, be 5, 10 degrees, whatever, above or below. Uh, benching material, this is important. I need to change and make sure it's set to PVC and not CPVC. I had a guy who asked me way back when I did the video on... Um, the venting of this, I used PVC and he said, no, 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 you have to use CPVC because of the temperature setting. So here's the uh, temperature. You can go up to 200 degrees with CPVC or basically 150 with PVC. Um, this unit should never get over 100, I was told. Uh, PVC was actually in the manual said it was perfectly fine. But I'll definitely make sure this is set to that. I do not have any elevation changes because we are less than um, 2,000 feet off, off the... Uh, ocean surface. Uh, I do not have an air handler. So there's only a couple things I need to change in the installer mode. I'm not going to do any preheating. I got to turn the external pump on. Um, the water pressure function should be fine. So I'll go through all these settings and get them get them set. It's pretty easy to do looks like and then it goes into error code. So I should be able to turn it on and then the auto fill should kick in and if I have any uh, pressure issues, if I have any anything that's still in the system that has air in it, uh, the auto filler is right here. And again, I have the uh, check valve, where is it at? Where is it at? Check valve right there to make sure that none of that glycol gets back through the system and into my water supply. Uh, of course, this valve only turns on if it's needed, and it would have pressure flowing this way, but if there's a failure, it makes sure that no water goes back out the opposite direction. So I'll go ahead and turn it on and hope nothing blows up. Okay, I just flip the breaker on. Turn my main switch on. Power. Let's make a noise. Going through its setup procedure. I think it'll take 15 seconds or so, I believe it said. That's the auto filler just kicked on. Yep, sits on fill. Clearly, I didn't get it. Well, it's not up to 12 psi, too. That's what it's doing now, it's pressurizing the system. that is a good time to check for leaks. So last doing that we'll recap here. Um, this is the outdoor temperature sensor. Um, this says heat demand input. I don't know what that is but I was not going to be using it so it didn't bother. Um, this is my thermostat wire here. Comes in and connects to I think this is a CN16 I believe terminal. Uh, my power for the external pump comes up right here down. I have it grounded and then it goes into the uh, external pump hook up right there And that's really all I had to do inside here um, Beyond flip the switch and 
let it do its thing. Okay, so right when I paused the camera, it went ahead and went up to uh, fill valve completed. Oh, I thought. Okay. <laughs> Nelly, hey, turn the water off. Sorry. So, so Nelly just turned it on. What? You're turning it on. You're running water and it's, it's kicking the system on. <laughs> I'm not done yet. Well, just wait. So now he's trying to kill me. Not done setting it up. <laughs> she goes and turns the kitchen sink water on and it starts trying to heat. I'm not sure what it's doing now since it got kicked on. Oh boy. Well, we just jumped from step 3 to step 13. Alright, I gotta wait for this to stop doing whatever it's doing now. Okay, so I discovered here I kept waiting for the display to turn off and it wouldn't turn off. So, what you have to do is, after a while the light, this uh, display will go dim. I kept thinking that was off, so I'd hold this down for 5 seconds and that would take me into um, a different setup mode, not the installer mode. So you actually have to hit the power button, then hold this down for 5 seconds. Now I'm in installer mode, so now I can go through and get those um, uh, parameters set. Water on. See the flame in there just kicked on. See through the hole. Fan motor, exhaust fan motor has kicked on. So it says we're doing domestic hot water, 120 degrees. It says the burner's on. Communication status is normal. This says the pump is on. Got hot water yet? It may take a little while to get there. Cause it's got to pump all the way through those lines, all the way through down there, into this manifold, over through the ceiling, oh, it's getting warm. down to the hot wife. <laughs> the hot wife getting hot water. <laughs> My soap dishes. Is it warm? It's getting warm. Yeah. Oh. I know. Now we need to fix this. Oh. Did you do that? This is facing the wrong direction. Mm. So. I fixed one thing and you gave me something else to fix. So, so I got the uh, hot water going out of the kitchen sink. Um, you look, they got really good flame in there going. Of course, it's brand new, so it should be. Uh, I can feel the pumps going. So right now what this is doing is it's internally circling water. So the water that's flowing through here is being heated up through these pipes. It's being brought down into the heat exchanger where the cold water, which comes in here, comes up, runs back and forth through the fins, and gets heated up by the hot water. So the domestic hot water does never, doesn't touch the actual flame itself. It doesn't get heated by the flame. It gets heated by the water that runs the boiler um, that ends up running through the floor. So the glycol solution that's running through here is also running through the heat exchanger and they don't touch um, but the hot water flows through this way, the cold water comes up, goes the opposite direction, they cross the paths and it heats the water. This comes out the hot water side and then up that tube to the sink. So Natalie just turned the hot water off, it senses that there is no more water flow and it shuts the heater off. And it also shut the vent to the, um, 
uh, air intake. So this little inside this deal is a valve that's opening and closing with the direction the, uh, the air is flowing. If it's coming in from my intake or out through the exhaust. So when I set up the uh, system, this should run for three minutes. And the reason why it does that is to make sure that it cools the system down so it doesn't overheat. So the only thing we haven't tried yet is the boiler system. So if I turn that on, um, what? Did you want me to turn that water back on or no? No, that's good. So now thermostats in here, it says 73. Let's, oh, I gotta turn the heat on. Ha <laughs> ha. It says 70, we'll bump this up to 75. Oh, you're gonna make a hot I just want to test system. So that should be completing the circuit back to here. And it should tell it to turn on. Should. And so far it's doing nothing. Okay, so I just read the manual real quick. And the sun icon there in the upper left hand side. So I set the outdoor temperature sensor to not let the boiler turn on if the outdoor temperature was too warm. And we do have a fairly warm sunny day today, so it must be above the uh, cutoff point for the temperature. So I can't test the boiler unless I turn the outdoor temperature sensor system off. So I'm gonna do that real quick and then we'll try this again. Okay, it's the next morning. I did turn the uh, temperature up to 150 degrees because 120 um, just didn't seem to be doing much. It ranged from 120 to 180. And the system kept turning on and off yesterday and I was thinking, man, I screwed something up. I spent forever trying to figure it out and follow it. Well, it uh, turns out what it's doing is there are several sensors in there to keep it from overheating or doing something wrong. So there is the uh, exhaust temperature set the PVC so it can only get so hot on the exhaust temperature. The wire temperature could only get to 120 so it would reach that and then turn off and then the uh, pumps would continue to run. So again, right now it's on so that symbol says the burner's on. That's my internal pump. That's my external pump. This is flashing. Oh, excuse me, this grill means that it's in heat mode and that the uh, boiler part's on. That flashing is normal because right now I have the outside um, temperature disconnected. So what I thought was an issue with this clicking on and off and on and off and on and off was actually just normal operation of it uh, cycling through so it doesn't overheat anything. But um, right now everything's nice and toasty. The only issue we had is the uh, condensate line started leaking up here and I'm not really sure why I was doing that. I would assume I didn't have this tight enough so anyways disconnected it, let it drain into the bucket down here, hooked it back up and it hasn't been a problem since then. But that's the only leak we've had uh, since since I uh, initially hooked everything up. So it's all seems to be working just fine and the downstairs is definitely warm. The only other problem that we're thinking we may have is that you know all the pipes converge right here. So right now this floor is is very warm and of course Natalie's using this as the pantry. So uh, we may have to adjust some of the uh, food out of here or put it higher up so it doesn't get overheated. Um, another thing I'm going to do because this room gets so warm is that that's the bottom of the stairs. I'm just going to put a uh, vent in that stair tread right there or the stair riser um, to allow some of this heat to escape because once we get um, doors and everything on here uh, it will probably be a little bit harder to keep this room cool. But the downstairs has hot water now. Um, I'm working on Barry's shower right now to get the shower rod up and get the seal around the outside done um, with some caulking and then we'll uh, touch up paint around it. So that's almost done. Um, we got the toilet installed in the girls bathroom and I uh, got a temporary door set up there and then need to get their shower set up and they can start taking showers in their own bathroom. So we're still missing our vanities. We just can't find a vanity that's of quality that isn't going to fall apart. All the vanities out there, all the you know sawdust or MDF and and uh, we want something that's going to last. So uh, I've debated about building one out of wood. I may end up doing that. I don't know yet. Um, I'm not going to spend as much money as they want on a piece of sawdust that 
gets wet, it's going to fall apart. So I'm trying to find something a little better quality. So right now, Barry's the only one who has a vanity. His is actually a cheap sawdust one, but I bought it for, uh, I think, 50 or 60% off at Home Depot years ago. It's just been sitting in storage. And it's only a 30-inch one, so I figured we throw that in there so we have something to use in the time being. But um, still looking for vanities. I'm still looking for countertops. I'm still working on siding. <laughs> still working on a lot of stuff. But um, nice and toasty in here. I gotta go work on the fireplace now. Uh, Natalie's sister is coming into town uh, all next week. And it'd be great if we can get the upstairs to have some better heat up there as well. So that's what I'm gonna head off to do now.